So the conclusion is the Coke King stuff works, but you gotta put a lot on there. Like you gotta be really sure that it's not going to just drip off of the components and leave some areas exposed. Welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. Today, we're going to talk about Coat King. I think that's how it's pronounced. K-O-T-K-I-N-G. And it is a silicone coating that you put on your RC electronics, and it is supposed to waterproof them. It's it's basically like kind of like a silicone caulking kind of idea. And this is basically a competitor to the long-standing conformal coating that you would put on the electronics. And uh, it, it seals them up, basically. It keeps the water off of them. It waterproofs them. So I got this stuff because I thought, well, I hadn't done any conformal coating, and I thought maybe this would be a good option. So I got it to try it out, and it's very new. Actually, it's only available from uh, a, a few places. I got mine from uh, Race Day Quads. Now, uh, I've got about six good things to say about this and then about twice as many bad things. So I'll tell you right now, bottom line up front, I didn't have the best experience with this uh, Coat King. Honestly, conformal coating is looking a whole lot better to me right now. So I may end up just doing conformal coating, um, and that's basically the bottom line. But if you want to know why and why I came to that conclusion, you can watch the rest of the video, and I'll take you through my whole testing process. So the ESC is definitely working. Let's get this stuff on there and see if it will survive some salt water. Let's get started with the pros and cons of Coat King. Pros, it is durable. It is durable, that is pretty nice. It's like a rubbery kind of coating. Uh, it is clear, so you can see the electronics. If you have lights that need to light up, you can see them, that's good. Um, it's non-toxic, I think, maybe, or at least it's not caustic. It doesn't smell like a lot, and it doesn't burn when I put it in my eyes. No, I'm just kidding. Don't put it in your eyes. Um, but it's, it seems like just kind of like a silicone material. It provides a physical barrier from debris and minerals, like salt in salt water. So that's good, because it's it, it keeps, uh, you know, the it encapsulates the electronics. And so even if you have, like, I don't know, rocks or sand or something, it's not going to, like, a braid, a braid. It's not going to, yeah, it's not going to rub against the electronics themselves. It has high temperature resistance. You can actually touch a soldering iron to this and it will take a while for it to get like even a little bit kind of squishy. So it, it has good temperature resistance. They claim that it will actually dissipate the heat of the electronics. So it's not like you're sealing in the heat. They say it will dissipate the heat i haven't actually tested that and finally it may be good for vibration dampening or using as kind of like a glue uh kind of like a silicone uh, uh gasket seal like you would use on an engine or something like that and those are about all the good things that i can say about this now let's move on to the cons now first of all this is the biggest one it's difficult to confirm the waterproofness of the actual coating that you put on there. And I'll explain why in the, in the next few reasons. In my testing, I had to do several coats and kind of touch up areas because it was not waterproofing like it was the rest of the board. I tested this on an ESC and a little brushless motor setup. Okay, here we go. Let's test this out. Let's dunk it in the salt water. Uh-oh. Did you hear that? The, the motor started chirping. That's bad. And that was the problem, was I couldn't see where it was actually making contact or covering the surfaces because it was all clear. Whoa, that's not good. When we dipped it in the water, this edge first, it, it turned on, the motor started running. We need to do a little bit of investigation here. We've got our multimeter set into continuity mode. Yep. Hello, short. And what this tells me is that uh, the yellow wire and the brown wire, or the signal wire and the ground wire, were just slightly uncovered. And that is one of the downsides of it being clear, is that you can't tell what's covered and what's not covered as well as you could if it was, you know, opaque. But if it was opaque, then you couldn't see, like, the board. So, you know, pick your poison. And the reason why you need to be able to see where it's applied and where it's not applied is because 
it can ooze away from the taller areas and expose them. So on some of the components on this ESC, they were kind of sticking up a bit more and they had sharp edges. So the coating was just kind of oozing down and it wasn't really like providing any coating over the metal exposed areas. All right. Whoa, that's not good. That's not good at all. What is going on? Why is this happening? I'm so sad. And it doesn't coat like a coat of paint. It does adhere to the electronics, but it doesn't form a protective film. We are getting a voltage reading and we should not be getting a voltage reading. So what must have happened was the coating just slid off of there. All right, time to coat it again. Let's it also is likely that you're going to need a second coat or touch up certain areas. If, if you have taller electrical components and it kind of oozes down, you probably want to build up another uh, coating on top of those higher areas. And that could take a while because the set time is about one hour, kind of one hour until it's, um, you know, it's still kind of tacky, but it, it won't ooze anymore. It has been about 20 minutes and let's see what the texture is here. Oh, it's still very goopy. Oh, it's goopy, but it will sort of take a shape. And then about, I don't know, 12 hours or something like that overnight um, to where it actually is not nearly as sticky and it's just kind of more of like a silicone rubbery type of feel and it's more set. I'm pretty sure that's the, or I'm pretty sure that that's when it's fully cured. It takes up physical space on the components. So if you're gonna build, if you're gonna build it up and do second coats and stuff, if you're working with a really tight build, that could be a problem. Also, it's going to add more weight than normal conformal coating, but I don't know how much, but it, it's gotta be more. Viscosity. The problem with this stuff is that it's not thick enough to keep the shape that you apply, so it's not like a paste, but it's also too thick to dunk the parts or spray the parts or, um, you know, apply it as, I guess, as evenly as I would like. And again, it doesn't really form a protective film, so you really, you really kind of need it to stay wherever you put it on the board and not have it move away. Now, this one's annoying. The nozzle consistently clogs after use. Like if you don't clear it out after you use it. So you, you, you apply the coating, you put the cap on cause that's supposed to keep it, you know, from drying up, but then you go to use it the next day and then it's clogged and you got to take off the nozzle, clean it out with like a toothpick or a needle and then use it again. So I don't like that. Code King should do like crazy glue and put a little needle in the cap so that when you put the cap on, it will unclog the nozzle and keep it keep it sealed up and airtight. Coat King also creates a physical barrier over the electronics, which makes them difficult to access or solder and things like that. So that's one of the downsides of having a physical barrier is um, if you need to get to the components, it's not very easy. And finally, it's not easy to remove for soldering, which I really don't like. And they claim that it is easy to remove, but I find that it is not easy to remove because you need to kind of like cut it out. And I don't really want to have to take a razor blade to a circuit board and other electronics like that. So it, yeah, it's difficult to remove and it comes when it comes apart, it kind of comes apart in chunks. It's kind of the consistency of like a gel candle. That's kind of what it's like. If you break apart a gel candle and the gel is in the, like these weird, chunky, rag, ragged, jaggedy chunks. Yeah, that's what it's like. All right, it's back. We're back. It's dry. It's the next day. Let's ch test it out. I can't talk anymore. All right, let's stick this baby in here and see what happens into our salt water. Uh, oh, let's stick it in like this so we can see this side because this was the side that was the problem before. So far, so good. All right, let's turn it on.
finally, finally we've passed the water dunking test. Well, there you have it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about this. I, it, I really was let down, to be honest with you. I thought this would be way better. I, I almost feel like uh, some sort of RTV, like just silicone uh, gasket stuff would work better than this. But I'm probably going to get some liquid conformal coating and just use that is what I'm thinking. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if, if you've had a similar experience and all that kind of stuff. We'd love to hear about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you again on the next one. We'll get, I mean, we get bars in our goggles.